two weeks ago I created this account. My Varlamor Locked Hardcore Iron Man. In the last episode we obtained 48 Slayer, which was the hardest requirement in order for us to complete Perilous Moons. We have now finished three out of five requirements that we need in order to complete the most important quest that will fully unlock Varlamor. The plan for this episode is simple. Entering the Camptorum, obtaining 38 Herblor for an overpowered potion, and receiving my best in slot training weapon, the Sulfur Blades. My plan started off slightly suboptimal. I thought I required level 40 magic in order to even consider training construction. So I spent many hours picking up air runes training magic, but then I realized that I can train both hunter and construction completely through forestry events. So with that information, information in mind, I went on a 100 plus hour grind that was 10 construction and 20 hunter. Oh, what is this? I got a first event. There are currently 9 forestry events that can spawn. For us, we are only interested in 2. One of them is poachers. That will give us a very minimal amount of hunter experience. And the second event we're interested in is beehive event. That will give us ridiculously minimal amount of construction experience. We're talking one construction experience per multiple logs. But that is a challenge I was willing to tackle. 25, 26, 30 wood cutting, we can now go to Willows. But before we continue on with the video, I have a small confession to make. I recently started playing Raid Shadow Legends again. A lot of people have been saying bad things about the sponsor of today's video. They say the game's a little bit too grindy, the game's pay to win, and it takes too long to progress. In the next minute or so, I'll let you know why those people are wrong. But if somehow this is your first time hearing about Raid, this video is perfect for you. You can play the game on PC, just like me, or you can play it on Android or iOS. All you have to do is follow the link in the description or simply scan the QR code and you can play the game for free and you can get two super strong epic champions and goodies as a bonus reward. Firstly, to the people that think that Raid is a little bit too grindy, I have a counter for you. Raid has this awesome feature called Auto Battle Mode and I personally use this feature all the time while playing RuneScape. Secondly, the game is also very free to play friendly. I started as a level 1, I'm currently level 57 and at no point did I feel like, hmm, I need to pay to play this game. To sum it up for you, you got 800 heroes, you got artifacts, you got clan bosses, and to top it all off, it really feels like there's always something new releasing. At the moment, there is a spring hunt event happening, where players can win gaming console and $10,000 worth of Amazon gift card rewards. Make sure to check the description to participate. And as if all of that was not enough, Raid is also helping my community out by giving everyone free two epic champions, Tyron, and once you reach level 25, you also get Rector Draft with a couple of other goodies as well. And as an icing on the cake, you can also use the promo code SPRINGHUNT24 to get extra 10 XP brews, 100 energy and 100,000 silver. As always, a big shout out to Raid for sponsoring the channel and go ahead, give the game a shot, it is worth your time. Wrong event, but decent XP actually. Wait, I got like a thousand plus XP drop for that. We're now all the way to 35 woodcutting. Oh, huge. I think this is going to be the last mime I need. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, we're now getting emotes. We got lean and we got glass wall. So two more mimes and we'll be done. Very cool. Almost missed the genie. And we go from 13 hunter to 14 hunter. Here's level 40 woodcutting. And here is 30 fletching. I can now move myself to willows. We have high enough woodcutting level and I'll be able to make a bunch of arrow shafts. There is 68 attack, I just woke up and we are stockpiling on as many runes as possible. We are now level 84 combat, all whilst hitting these mosses for a very long time. 35 farming, we can now plant tick trees. What? What, 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 what? Curved bone, I'm pretty sure that's 1 in 5,000 by the way. 45 wood cutting, let's start the session. Please tell me this is it. Oh, I'm getting hunter XP, let's go! Why am I so excited about a hunter event? Okay, 7 XP per pop, huge! Where are we at? Oh my god, that's so slow actually. Aside from lamping, this is the only way for me to ever train hunter. That's why we're training woodcutting to begin with. That was really good, 190 XP away from level 15. There's no way I got a back-to-back -back foxes. That is so good for us, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 woodcutting. We also got 37,000 shafts right now, no way. This is it, this is the construction one. One construction XP, huge. Sturdy beehive parts. Wait, that's it? I got one XP. Oh, you build more. I don't have enough logs. <laughs> Bro, there is no way you forgot to buy a house. <laughs> 
Bro, that's it? You're telling me I got 5 XP for this event? Bro, I just got a back-to-back -back bees. I have a little bit more logs to work with. I'm on 12 construction XP, but like the problem with this is it takes so long to get the logs. Let's go! This will be the level, I think. 1 XP away. There it is, big level 15 hunter. 55 woodcutting been a very long woodcutting session. We're also up to 38 fletching, 67,000 arrow shafts, and we are 157 XP away from Hunter. We did get a couple more fox events. Time played right now, 5 days and 12 hours, so this is by no means quick at all. I mean, we're talking entire day of AFKing here. There it is, the big level 16 Hunter. There is 69 attack, one more level in attack until we fully commit on the strength training for a while. And as you can see, most giant inventory looking beautiful. Up to 59 woodcutting, and I started force spawning forestry events. There is a little bit of a method to this madness. It basically consists of you hopping through 10 to 20 worlds, preparing the yew trees by simply hopping worlds whilst your chopping animation is happening. And then you simply cycle through about 10 to 20 worlds, and when you come back to the world you originally started on, the very first chopped tree is gonna break the tree down. And every time the tree is felled, you basically have a chance to spawn forestry event. Now my account is only level 59, so I just chop trees in the vicinity, and when the forestry event spawns, I can go ahead and do it. Let's go! We got the foxes. There it is, 17, 3 more levels to go, 400 experience, which is like 3 or 4 events. I'm not sure, but this could be the full outfit completed actually. I do believe this is it, this is the pants, and I now think I have everything, let's quickly take a look. A random event starting to look extremely good, and I lied, I'm still missing the head. I'm still missing both heads, actually, camo and leatherhosen. I do have everything from a zombie, I'm missing body from the mime, and legs from the mime, and I'm missing gloves and boots from the beekeeper, so very balanced event-wise, almost to the point where we start getting some lamps. There it is, big 60 woodcutting, we can now chop yew trees. I mean, I do have iron eggs, so I assume it's gonna take forever to chop down a yew long, but maybe it's not as bad as I think, you know? Maybe it's gonna be alright. Another maze, this time we are speedrunning it. Okay, here we go. I didn't actually see percentage, but I don't think I made any mistakes. And yes, this is huge. 210 chaos runes, that's amazing. 105 death runes, a bunch of mithril as well. Here's 36 magic, there's 37 magic, and here's 38 magic. I pretty much still have about 500 mind rune casts, but I don't want to pick up more air runes at the moment. We are just two events away from level 18 hunter, and that's not counting in the XP lamps that we could get as well. B random event. It appears that we might get a construction level from this. One XP at a time. There is level 2 construction. Huge. Do I get more XP now? Let's see. Now I still get 1 XP, but I get it more often. Imagine I get 10 construction before I finish my hunter grind. It could actually be possible. Huge for the account. Just got account check, meaning we got a lamp, meaning hunter experience. 170 XP, we are now level 18, there's absolutely no way, huge for the account, 3 construction, do I get more XP now? In before I'm gonna do all of this, oh he disappeared, in before I'm gonna do all of that and I'm actually gonna get construction before Hunter completed. It's maybe going to happen, I mean the XP gets better and better, and yes, I have been chopping yew trees with my iron eggs, don't comment on it, it looks like it is happening. Not the foxes, still waiting on those, but construction training is actually speeding up, as you can see, we sometimes get 2 XP, and now we're level 4 construction, we only need 10. I wanted to make a saw exception, once I would reach 40 magic, so I could teleport to house and train construction that way. The way it's looking right now, I'm gonna get 10 construction before I finish my hunter, and as you can see, XP I'm getting 2s quite often right now. I'm quite happy I banked all these U logs whilst AFKing. And just like that, we got to 5 construction, no pop-up unfortunately, there it is, 6 construction. How much XP do we get now? Do we get 3 drops? 2? 3, there it is, even faster, huge. There's absolutely no way. Another beehive random event. Oh, it's so nice to see the 3 XP drops. Oh, please stay a bit longer, I just need 3 more logs and I get the level. It's staying. There's level 7 construction. Let's keep it going, get as much XP as we can. I don't believe it anymore, we got more bees. I might even get enough XP to finish level 8 off of this one. Oh, this is going pretty fast, not gonna lie. There's level 8 construction, 2 more levels to go. And we get 4 XP drops right now. This is crazy. No way! 
I've been waiting for this one for way too long, you guys have no clue. There is level 19 Hunter, only one more level to go, 500 XP, I think that's 3 events. And we will have Hunter completed, we're getting 10 XP a pop right now. At the moment, I'm 2 bees away and 3 or 4 Fox events away from being able to unlock Cantorum. My homie Freaky Forester, I do think I have most of the pieces, let's see what we unlock with this one. Oh my goodness, we got a lamp. There is absolutely no way. Another fox random event. There it is, the big level 20 hunter. All through these dumb foxes, I hate them. There's a B random event, I'm AFK in Teeks while streaming New World. Construction, 80 XP, we're now level 9 construction. We won. I genuinely think we just won. We just won RuneScape. Now, if you wanna know how long this has taken me, yeah? This has been a ridiculous process, 7 days and 1 hour playtime. I mean, I'm literally out here on 69 woodcutting, whilst only chopping yews with Iron X. Okay, let that sink in for a second. But I do think we get enough XP to where this is the last event we need, and this might be the angle for us to finally unlock Cam Torum. I do hope this is enough though. I don't want this guy to disappear on me. Can I do one more sprint? Oh, I'm like 5 logs away. Please, I wanna kill Naguas, man. I've been doing the woodcutting for so long. Don't you dare disappear, my guy. Don't you dare disappear. Don't you dare disappear. We did it. We did it. 10 construction. We have every requirement completed. Oh my goodness. 7 days, 1 hour in the making. This feels amazing. You guys have no clue how long this took. There is one thing I never showed and that is how much forestry I actually did. I've never done forestry on any of the accounts. So I almost got 30,000 anima infused bark, 200 oak leaves, maple leaves, 900 willow leaves, 240 U leaves, zero magic leaves. I don't know how good this is. I don't know if this is good or not. You guys let me know in the comments, but that's how much forestry I had to do to finish my hunter and construction. Here is the start to Perilla Moons, the quest we've been building towards since the creation of this account. Obviously my stats are nowhere near enough to be able to defeat the moons just yet. However, just the fact that I can access the Cam Torum will be absolutely massive for us. For now, we gotta kill the soul for Nagua. Look at my friend, Mr. Beekeeper over here. As if I haven't already repaired enough beehives, we're now gonna help a brother out as well. The question right now is, what do I lamp? Like, what do I actually lamp right now? I feel like I've lamped up everything. Do I just start lamping agility, maybe? I, I genuinely don't know. Like, what do I lamp? Well, here's my first Nagua. And the reason why these are so good, they have like a negative defense, meaning that your max hits are like higher so I can hit like 19s on this uh, but there's the first one defeated and we're gonna be doing thousands and thousands of these there it is the very first time walking over the water just like Jesus and there we are Cam Torum can I I don't even see anything oh there we go we're in there's dwarves Oh, this city is gonna be absolutely amazing and we're just gonna explore every single store that there is in this city. It's gonna be super useful. This place is massive. I mean, look at this. We got a rune shop, we got a hairdresser, we got general store, magic shop, bank, sword shop. Like, we're gonna explore everything. This place is gonna be sick. Also, these guys are racist towards you when you come inside, just in case somebody was wondering. Wait, there's a bank. Can I already access bank or do I need to complete the quest first? Let's take a look. I can. Okay, that's pretty useful. I'm gonna do my best to partially complete this quest. Obviously, I don't think I can defeat all the moons just yet. Once we reach the building supplies part of the quest, we now have the access to construction training. We have a saw. Unbelievable. We also have a bunch of building supplies and whatnot. Let's set up all our camps and then we are ready to start farming some Naguas. However, looking at my jewelry, there might be some other things we do first. But we'll see, one step at a time. There is so much new things we can do right now that I'm just not used to it because I've just been chopping trees for a few days. Here are the Naguas, we'll be killing a lot of this in the future. Oh shit, this is multi or what? I will be alright, we run our way through. There's one camp completed, camp number two being built. This should also be the place where I'll be able to train my hunter from level 20 on, uh, more on that in the future. 
And the last camp. I can now grab hunting supplies so I have access to the butterfly net and ropes. Fishing supplies for knife and fishing net, but also herblor supplies. I can't really make the potions yet, I'm gonna need 38 herblor for that, but we have access to all of these cool things. The quest is immediately taking us to the magic shop by quickly trading this NPC. Look at the beauty. We got nature runes, fire runes, air runes. I never need to pick an air rune up again in my life. We got everything here magic training completely unlocked law runes all the teleports everything is absolutely unlocked that is gonna be so good the very next location the quest takes us is the blacksmith here we have a furnace we can use but also an anvil right next to the bank we'll definitely be using this place but by trading this guy we got a sword shop so adamant sword not really useful adamant warhammer not really useful but a nice adamant square shield here valued at 3.8k would be our best in slot shield for a little bit of time however if i am going for the blades i don't really think i'll be buying this anytime soon i have collected the tail the paste and the scales and now i do believe i need to defeat the bosses however i am by no means ready so what else is in the city west of the smith we have a shop with a bunch of drinks this shop is exactly the same as in the actual city general store is pretty simple i don't think i have anything special here but arguably the most important shop alongside the magic shop is this shop that Huito has. Our very own Herblor shop. And why is this so good? The Vials of Water and also Eyes of Newt. We need to train our Herblor up to 38 and this is our way of doing it. And there's also a Tesoro over here that you can trade in order to buy yourself a Rune Pickaxe which is huge. 32k, that's all for the future. I don't have a lot of coins at the moment. Spent it all on food and random stuff. We are going to buy Vials of Water and Eyes of Newt. Let's make all our Guams into attack points potions, see what we end up on. 8 Herblor, 9, 10 Herblor, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm slowly running out of ingredients to keep getting Herblor levels and the main thing stopping me right now is actually my coins. Here is 15 Herblor. So in order to fix that, we're gonna get 50 thieving and we're gonna start doing the house thieving, which is also something I've never done before. And it's also something that can give us very good jewelry. And this account at the moment needs good jewelry. Before I commit to the Nagua's grind, I need a better amulet, 100%. For now, let's try to milk as much XP as we can, up to 16 Herblor and up to 17 Herblor. I'm gonna be stopping here. I want to make a lot of money. I need to buy feathers for fletchings, supplies for magic and more supplies for Herblor. Let's get it done. With that thief, we're now level 50 thieving, meaning we can now start thieving wealthy citizens. With them, I can get house keys. With house keys, we can make money. We can make jewelry. Let's get it done. Wealthy citizens are located in the center of a city. And as you can see, when a little guy distracts them, you can actually AFK pickpocket them. I kind of just missed an, a window right there. Uh, but these are really good. As you can see, 180 GP start or maybe zero. And we get two pickpockets. So this is what? 85 coins per pickpocket, I think, quick math. This should be very solid money. So there we go, the homie Leo breaks his leg, you come right here, you don't even click, and you are thieving. This is so huge. Usually, you miss so many of the pickpockets. Look at the XP per hour going to the moon, honestly. And this is such good money as well. This thieving method is super good. With up to three house keys, I think I'll wait till like five, I'll use five at a time. But I'm really enjoying this, and I'm such a low thieving level as well. It's solid. 62k xp per hour at this level i got six keys to use let's see if we get lucky i've never done this activity this guy doesn't seem to be home right can i just go in there we go we use a key and can i just search stuff there we go we now get valuables and it's afk and i can't miss so this is actually probably pretty good at this level there is 52 thieving i've trained many 99s on many runescape accounts and i think this has to be my favorite way that i've ever trained thieving i mean you have the active part of it you just thieve you get house keys and then you have the super afk part of it where you just click a chest and wait i really enjoy this our very first amulet is emerald not what we need we either need sapphire or ruby or diamond the best part about this is if you play with the sound on this middle sound you hear a nice whistle right as the owners are about to come back that's when you know you need to exit the window and you also hear a nice noise whenever the arrow above a certain activity is shown and that gives you bonus xp and after you're done robbing all the houses we got sapphire necklace emerald but also blessed bone statuette if i break this one down i get a bit of crafting xp and some bone shards which is prayer xp and if i come here to the dodgy character i can cash in these valuables cash all of them and 22k on top of that 
35k mate, just like that, in like half an hour, I guess, with a very bad thieving level. Up to 53 thieving, 54 thieving, 55. We now have 100k, 58. 1000 casts, here's big 40, time for me to AFK. Good morning, I'm done AFKing, I'm back to thieving, this is 59 done. I also AFKed all the way to 44 magic, very nice, we just pulled a sapphire amulet. So now, only thing we need is a ruby amulet. Now that we have a sapphire amulet, I can simply go ahead and enchant it. And we are now a proud owner of amulet of magic. There is also an emerald amulet that we have, and until the point where I actually do get the ruby amulet, we can also enchant this one for amulet of defense i mean why not i'm going to attempt to use some magic on nagwas just to see how strong it feels and then i'll decide whether or not i want to commit to maging them for a bit scratch that i don't think it's worth maging them however i'm gonna just finish this one level there's level 45 magic we can now cast teleport to camelot never gonna use that the goal right now is to get to 47 magic so then i can plus two boost and make my strength amulet drop rate of nagwas is super nice they drop a ton of noted ore which we can then turn into smithing XP, which we can then turn into fletching XP by making arrows. 46 magic, didn't quite have enough runes to finish 47 magic, even though I'm super close, I'm not too worried about it. I'm now going to try and do every single potion I can. And as you can see, I have farmed quite a decent amount of taramins. And these are all gonna be turned into strength potions because I do believe I also have a bunch of Limpurt roots. 19, 20, and we can now start doing Haralanders, which I also have a bunch of. 21, 22, 23, 24, and all the way up to 25. 13 more levels to go. We can now clean Raynar weeds, which is gonna be very helpful. 26. In the center of the city, there is a food shop. You guys are already familiar with it. It sells chocolate bars. We're gonna need about 100 of these, and we're gonna need to do a little bit of hopping. There is 27 herb lore. With all the chocolate dust, we can now create energy potions, which might actually be helpful, meaning we can actually start running around the game. There's 28 herb lore, 29, level 30. Only eight more levels to go, 31. And here we go, 60 thieving on the account, very good. Trying my best to get super consistent with the farm runs. Here's 39 farming. Count check, been a while since we got a lamp, and this is the dilemma of the account. What do I start lamping? There is actually a very slow agility method with toy mice that gets you about 4 5k XP an hour, but I was thinking since my slayer is already high, I just keep lamping slayer. We're just gonna use the first one on slayer get 480 experience and i guess i'll be deciding in the future here is our first mining level and whilst i'm training mining i guess this would be a good chance to explain to you why 41 mining is so important by me obtaining 41 mining i can mine calcified rocks inside the city of camtorum and there is a chance that you can create a one-click teleport method inside the city. Since I don't currently have any other teleports available on the account, that is my safety. If I'm ever lagging, DCing, crashing, anything like that, I can quickly click that teleport and get myself to safety. That's why that's so important. I would not want to risk over 7 days and 10 hours of progress on this account so far. Time to make a few purchases. Rune pickaxe for 32k, adamant pickaxe for 3200, and mithril pickaxe for 1.3k beautiful six mining we can now get rid of our iron pickaxe we now start using steel pickaxe 15 mining i can now start power mining iron rocks 21 mining i can now wield a mithril pickaxe here's 31 mining we can now use adamant pickaxe and 10 more levels to go i have also decided to move to the triple iron rock spawn which is located all the way to the southeast of varlamor 35 mining here's 40 and just like that we got to 41 mining we can now equip a rune pickaxe which we already have but we can also start mining calcified deposits which is super good i also ended up pulling a lamp uh, so as you guys know putting everything into slayer right now that's 480 xp right there if you guys do not know why this is so crucial for the account it's mainly for the fact that this is afk prayer xp funnily enough i can get a bunch of bone shards whilst mining and i can then use those to train prayer and it's actually pretty substantial we are currently located in the eastern part of cam Torum, and over here you can mine the calcified deposits and look at these xp drops they're actually quite common but as you can see we're getting blessed bone 
shards completely AFK and we're also getting this calcified deposits which we can then turn either into more bone shards or calcified moths and those moths are used to teleport to this place this is looking to be quite solid and uh, by no means I have anything good I'm le literally level 41 as early as you can do it and all I got is a rune pickaxe to my name all right so I've been able to be here for l l let's say a couple of hours I've been super heavily AFK we're now up to 47 mining so for the first six level of mining almost seven because we're almost level 48 I've gotten nearly full inventory couple of gems two events one gave me diamonds one gave me frog token but most importantly 2.2k blessed shards that should be like multiple prayer levels I think so once you start using these on the anvil as you can see I'm getting calcified moths and this is basically teleported directly next to the bank directly into the city but sometimes I'm also getting more blessed shards which is even more prayer XP all right so I've done my farm run all we do is we crush the sulcified moth and look at this right next to the bank inside the city this is gonna be so useful late night 50 mining so I have been AFKing for a while we're now up to 55 mining don't give a man an AFK spot this good man I also have 9,000 blessed bone shards what a session this has been I'm now up to 190k mining XP and we went from 41 to 56 mining whilst also training a bunch of farming in order to prepare our 38 herbs blur that we need in order to start farming naguas in that process we also got almost 11,000 blessed bone shards and obviously a bunch of calcified moths but now it is time to get massive amount of prayer xp we're starting at 44 let's see what we get to all we have to do is we need to bless our vines on the exposed altar we now have a full inventory of jug of blessed vines and then all we have to do is make it north of the altar right here in libation bowl if you guys watched episode number two you know all about this place However, right now I can basically train prayer fully AFK. In hindsight, this took me pretty much the entirety of yesterday to get to, but still, this is why we did it. I'm gonna click it once, put it on the screen, and just enjoy. There is 45 prayer. We keep it going. Look at the XP per hour. 46 prayer obviously it's very skewed but there's 85 combat as well now we need more prayer so we run down get prayer from the altar but look at that experience per hour it's absolutely ridiculous there's 47 prayer 48 prayer out of the way as well and we're not done yet 49 prayer as well and we still have 4000 to do there's a big level 50 prayer as well and we will probably get to 51 almost as if i calculated it there it is ladies and gentlemen we just went from 44 to 51 prayer obviously once we get the herb lord out of the way this is gonna help us even more with the prayer potions obviously lasting longer right back into herb lord we are now level 32 six more levels to go and even the farming runs have been on point here's level 40 farming here's 33 333 000 xp later here is 62 thieving and haralanders are quite rare it is one in 200 and six pickpockets to get one of those and then tarot means are one in 140 i have a confession i might be addicted to afk and calcified rocks we are just a few swings away from another level but also we got the book of knowledge but also we got a lamp but also we have 3500 extra blessed bone shards so let's start at the beginning let's rub our lamp put it into slayer 480 let's rub our book of knowledge put it into slayer 720 and let's finish this clip off with a very nice 59 mining another beekeeper ah there it is beekeeper's boots one of the last pieces all right we've afk for long enough we are now up to 65 mining 470,000 xp all the way up to 17,000 blessed bone shards we're gonna be using that in a bit i have 40k to spend right now i'm gonna spend it all till the last penny on some magic because i'm so tired of running back and forth every time i'm doing a farm run and i see Simply want to unlock the Civitas Illa Fortis teleport. It's 54 magic requirement. Here's 47. And here's 48 magic. 34 Herblord, 4 levels to go. And here is 35. These moths actually sell for a decent amount of money. Now, I need to be smart how many I actually want to use because they're not that fast to get. I'm just going to quickly do a little testing and see how much I can alk one for. I can't. Okay, but I do believe I should be able to sell them. So by selling one, 4,000. And it goes down to 3.7. 
All right, I sold 20, I got 80k. I moved over to Thieves just because I want to also stockpile on a few herbs. Here is 49 magic. Here's the big 50, only one more level to go. Back once again, trying to hunt for a strength amulet from the houses. And here is 64 thieving. We made it, 65 thieving is all we needed and we got a ruby amulet. I have two keys left, I'm gonna return to this later. Also got 71k in the process. I do think this will be enough to pay for my 51 magic meaning we've unlocked absolutely everything I wanted to unlock. Fast ability to teleport to the city whenever I need to do the farm run and then an ability to go back into the city with the mobs that we have. Now a strength amulet, obviously as soon as we get the herblore out of the way we can farm Nagwas, so everything is coming together beautifully right now. And here we are with a level 49 enchantment on a ruby amulet, we are now a proud owner of amulet of strength and this is a much bigger upgrade than people really realize. Uh, we're gonna move it right over here next to my melee gear and I guess the next plan is to just farm up enough herbs oh my let's not talk about it bro I might have just wasted my entire money on a stack that was basically empty <laughs> there's no way oh my bro why does death rune cost a thousand coins when it's like what I've been paying 1k per rune accidentally dude I was hopping worlds right just being a good old Iron Man, buying some runes that I need to get some magic XP. And look at it, bro, I didn't see it. I just paid 40k for 40 runes. I hereby declare this is an absolute disaster. But look at this, this ridiculous difference. Going from 180 when the stock is full. To, to, this, is, this is normal price, but then it was 1000 per rune. I do wish I realized earlier how good this place actually is, but there is level 70 attack. We now have all the requirements for dual Makuhito. 36 herblor, 37 herb, and just one more tiny level to go. Bio, random event? No, okay, so one more. Now we got zombie dance and zombie walk. This could be huge. If this herb has six herbs inside, we are done with our herblor grind. That that's three, that's four. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna be two XP off. It's fine, we're just gonna... Listen, let me get it done quickly. We have been preparing for this exact moment for a couple of days now. We are just a little bit of XP away. You may be thinking, why is that so crucial? But I guess even if you're not stuck in Varlamor, this level is pretty decent because we can now create not only prayer restore potions, but also moonlight potions. And I'll show you all about this in a moment because we're gonna be entering the combat training portion of the account. I've stacked nearly 20,000 blessed bone shards. There is 52. Beautiful up to 53 prayer, 54 prayer. And here's the big 55 prayer. 56, do we get it? We get it. 57 prayer, wow. AFKing our mining from 41 to 65. I spent about one or two days doing it and obviously got my herb done in the process. Right now there is absolutely nothing stopping me to test out Nagwas and finally get the blades drop. I have fully prepared the account to be able to defeat Nagwas. We got the full Addy, we got Rune Mace, Black Square Shield. And now not only that, we can also get full inventory worth of supplies completely for free. Only thing I have is a teleport out in case things get bad. Firstly, we're gonna get a full inventory of Moonlight Grubs. Then we're gonna use our Pestle and Mortar, get it nicely crushed. And then we're gonna be using these Moonlight Grubs on the Vials of Water. And we're now creating the Moonlight Potions. And the reason why Nagwas are gonna be so good for us to farm is mainly because of the fact that they have minus four flat armor. Meaning that every time I hit them, I'm gonna be dealing four extra damage and there is simply no other monster that works like that and now it is time to put this method to the test how much xp can i actually do and how afk this actually is as you can see i'll be hitting some big numbers 21s my guy i'm hitting 22s and the xp per hour should absolutely start resembling that i was getting about 30k completely afking on crabs and i should be getting a whole lot more from here well if you're a fool like me this 57 death rune drops it's almost like getting 57k. I'm timing myself how long I could realistically AFK for and it was exactly 1 minute and 10 seconds before I needed to click on a prayer potion. So this is what a full inventory of Moonlight Potions looks like. We gained almost 30,000 experience, but also look at this. Over 100 Iron Ores, a bunch of Copper, Tin, Coal, Silver even, and decent amount of Chaos Runes, Death Runes, and honestly, Fire and Nature Runes as well. We killed 78 in our first inventory, and the drop chance is 1 in 450. Another beautiful inventory. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, they are not even highlighted. 
Sulfur Blades and this is single-handedly going to be our best in slot training weapon because not only am I double hitting this is basically like wielding a dragon scimitar but again Naguas are monsters with minus four defense meaning that both of these rolls are actually working towards our max hit meaning every time I hit I guarantee plus eight damage which is ridiculous training is look at this that was a 32 by the way I just hit a 32 my max hit before that was 23 I think does the max checks out i'm not sure but what i am sure about is that you should subscribe because in the next episode we're taking on the perilous moons so we either make it or we will die trying this was a very long episode to produce and i really hope you guys did enjoy it consider subscribing and make sure the video gets at least three likes and whilst you're at it please check out raid shadow legends because they are supporting the channel big time see you next week